Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky, and if you can't tell, we are in my kitchen with two massive wheelbarrows filled with apples right behind me. Today is gonna to be a huge harvest, not harvest, <laughs> preservation day. We've already harvested these apples. I harvested them two days ago. If you wanna watch that video, I do have a whole video on harvesting them. I will leave one up here and down in the description box if you're interested in that. We have a ton of plans for these apples. My sister is actually currently on her way over to help me process these apples. I was not actually planning to do this today, but my sister said she was available to help me process today. And if your sister is available to help you process two wheelbarrows plus two big boxes full of apples, you say, yes, I'll drop anything and we're going to be doing this project today. So we have a few big plans for them. We're going to be making a ton of applesauce. We're going to be making some packages so that we can throw in the freezer to have some quick apple crisps in the fall and winter. We are going to be making probably some apple butter. We are going to be making apple cider. I have a new steam juicer that I just got and I used it and I made pear cider and it was fantastic. So we're going to be making pear cider out of the skins and peels and cores of the apples along with some of the little apples that are going to be a pain to process. We might just make some apple cider out of these ones. We also are going to be making some scrap apple cider vinegar. If you guys have never made your own homemade vinegar before, it's super simple and easy and I can show you how to do that. So, all things apples, 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 apples. I have two big roasters out this morning. I kind of took some time to get my kitchen set up so that it'd be easier to start when my sister gets here so that we can just hit the ground running. We have our juicer out. I've got my canners out. I've got my lemon juice to do the canning with. I have all my jars out, lids, rings, bands. We have big bowls for the scraps. What else do we have out? I'm just looking in my kitchen to see. Let's see. And just hang out with us today. It's gonna to be a busy day. I've got comfy clothes on, I got an apron on because it's gonna be getting kind of messy and sticky in here probably. And we're just gonna spend the day in the kitchen today hanging out, doing a lot of canning, a lot of preserving, and it's just gonna be fun. So hang out with me today. Oh, I don't know if you can tell, this is actually the first video I'm shooting with my new camera. I've shot all my previous videos with an old iPhone 7 that I've had for years. It was actually hand-me-down from my husband, so hopefully the audio and visual is better for you guys, and you guys can just hang out with my sister and I. I'll introduce you when she gets here. You've actually met her once. Her name is Sarah. We did a kombucha making video together, and we're just going to have fun in the kitchen hanging out. So this is how I have my kitchen set up. I have two apple core slicers and peelers here. One for me, one for my sister. The silver one's actually mine, and this one is my mom, so I borrowed that one for today. Even though my sister's not here yet, I'm gonna go ahead and just get started so that we can have some apples cooking down, and we can probably get our steam juicer going. I went ahead and turned the steam juicer on so that the bottom of the pot can start to get hot. The steam juicer's pretty cool. I've only used this one other time. I'm not gonna do a tutorial, full tutorial on this today because I wanna use it a few more times before I'm comfortable doing that, I will link this down in the description box along with all the other canning equipment stuff we're going to be using today and my favorite canning cookbook. It's the Ball Complete Book of Home Preservation. We're going to use all the directions and times for all the canning that we're going to be doing from this book right here. So I'm going to go ahead and set you down and we're just going to get started peeling, slicing, and getting these apples processed. I think I'm going to start on these apples. And when I make applesauce, I really like to do a combination of apples. I have a total of three different varieties of apples on my property, but I've only picked two of the trees so far. And these are the ones that are showing, they're the most ripe. I let these get a little too ripe on the tree, and that's when the bugs start to get them. <laughs> what I found, this is only my second year growing apples, and I found that if you leave the fruit on the tree to completely ripen on the tree, then that's when the bugs tend to find them. So there is some bug damage on these ones. These apples here have a lot less damage on them and these are gonna store probably a lot longer than the other ones because they're perfectly pristine, there's no bug holes. Apples that are freshly picked from a tree are gonna last a really long time in your refrigerator. And so we don't have to get to every single one of these apples now to process. Any ones that have any sort of damage on them or anything like that are gonna go bad a lot faster. So those ones have to be processed but we will go through and pick out the really beautiful, like look at this one, really beautiful pristine apples, no damage, perfectly ripe, and we'll stick these in the fridge. And these are gonna last in the fridge a really long time. All the apples are grown once a year. And then what happens is those apples in orchards, they grow, they get picked, and they get stored in warehouses for months and months and months. 
And then when grocery stores need apples, they take those apples out of the warehouse and bring them to the store. The average age of an apple in your grocery store is about six months old. I'm also going to take a towel and put it underneath this apple core and slicer on my floor. I'm doing this because this does have juice that's going to drip down onto the floor. And I'm just trying to think of my cleanup time and making it a little bit easier on myself. This is, I'm still going to have to mop my floor when I'm done with this project, but this is definitely going to keep it a little less sticky. So my sister just got here and she brought a crock pot so that she'll have a crock pot full of apples to go home. They're heavy. So my sister is going to put the apples in this roaster here because it's closest to her. I'm just putting a little bit of water in there with it so they don't scorch before the apples start to cook down and make their own juice. So we have this roaster about half full. I have it set on 350 degrees and we have enough of the peels. Well, I had it at 300, so I'm turning it up to 350. We have enough of the peels now to get the apple cider started, so let me turn you around. I have this bottom one filled to about here with water, and this top part is where you put your fruit, and we're just going to stuff this filled with these peels. And I'm going to turn the stove on to about medium high, and I'm going to get this boiling because I need that boiling so that it creates the steam to release the juices from the pits and peels. It smells really good. All right, so that's only about halfway filled, but I want to get this going because we can continue to add to this as we get more peels, and the peels that are in here right now are going to start to cook down, so we'll continue just to add, add, add to this. Well, you've got half a box already. Yeah? No, probably quarter. Okay. But I am picking out the bigger apples to begin with. So. That box has the smallest apples in it. Yes. Okay. I mean, there's small ones in here too, but. Did you pick these off the tree? Or were yeah. they on the ground? No, I picked them off the tree. I think it does work better if you put the stem side. In. Yeah. Uh -huh. Your apples look so different than these ones. Is that a different, that's a different tree? No. It's oh. just, I picked these ones first and then those ones. Got it. The apple core doesn't do the best job getting the seeds out for the most part it does but on this one the seeds are left in there so I'm gonna take the knife and just cut that out I don't really like there to be apple seeds in my applesauce because I don't run it through a food mill after it's done we'll just put those in there it smells so good in here I know. Oh, it smells like the apple festival Mom said she's going to go buy us apples again this year. Oh, I don't need apples. <laughs> you do want to take the leaves off. You don't have to get the stem off, but... And then put the stem side in here. Because if the stem gets stuck on here when you're doing it, it won't flawlessly cut the apple. Sometimes you have to help it hook on there. Nice steady pressure. And then I'll show you one more trick when you take that off. See, that was perfect. That's how it should go every time. You can pick off the little pieces on the bottom if you don't want skin. So you can go like this, so you can pull it straight back, well, so you don't have to twist it the whole time. And then when you load it on, you can go like this and push it forward and get it started. I always do that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> do it however you want to do it. You just wind it a few extra times. Perfect. This roaster is completely full. I'm going to go through and just kind of chop it up so I can get it to sit down a little bit more. And then we're going to get the lid on this and we are going to start filling up the next roaster. Some people like the texture with the skins and the, the cores. 
I had done that one time and I was not happy with the way the texture came out. And that's why I do take the time to peel and core my apples for applesauce. Just be, that's personal preference on that. I want to show you what this looks like. This has been about 20 minutes or so. And there already is, can you see in there? There's already about, I don't know, a little over half an inch of apple cider in here. So we're definitely starting to get some. And this has already cooked down a little bit more so I can start putting a little bit more peels and cores in here. You do want to keep checking the bottom to make sure that there's water in the bottom and that it doesn't boil dry because you are boiling this a lot. This, there is a lot of steam, so you do need to check that. Frost, but our frost isn't usually until November 9th. Okay, then I might get one, but <laughs> from like the, I don't know, dozen or two dozen. Which is crazy because I pull it all over my I garden. I know. I told Abel if and when we move, I want that is like that's gonna be my garden. Okay, go for it. So we're talking about calendula because you guys know if you've seen any of my garden tour videos that I grow a lot of calendula, and my sister actually wants to make some calendula salve, and we're gonna make some together too. But I had given her, I'd gifted her some calendula seeds in the spring time. Yes. And she planted them and they just now sprouted and it's, what is it today? September 12th? Today? I have two that are this big and one that's like this big and I planted two dozen seeds. Some I started in the house, some I planted directly outside. So, so. They, they should, they should blossom, I would think, before the end, before, because um, calendula goes really fast, before our first frost because our first frost because if I'm in zone 8b and so our first frost is usually November 9th so we are going to make some apple cider vinegar my sister has never made apple cider vinegar before I have a half gallon jar here and we are just going to put scraps of the apples we're going to put the pits and cores in here and we are going to fill this three-fourths the way full so we're getting pretty close to that it is so easy to make vinegar. You can make vinegar out of any fruit or vegetable or plant, really. You can hear my dog. He's down here eating apple scraps that fall. Are you eating the scraps? This is gizmo. So to make vinegar out of basically any fruit or vegetable is you want to fill your container up about three-fourths the way full. And then you need to add some more sugar because how vinegar is made is on all fruits and vegetables, there's natural yeast and bacteria, which are a good thing. I know that sounds kind of gross, but it's on every living thing. And a lot of that yeast and bacteria actually come from the soil, and they're actually really good gut-healthy bacteria, as long as your soil is a healthy soil. So if you're using scraps, like I am today, we need to actually give more carbohydrates, more sugar to the bacteria and yeast. The way the vinegar is made is the natural yeasts in here eat the sugars and turn it into alcohol. And then the bacteria in here eat the alcohol and turn that into acetic acid, which is vinegar. You could turn this into a hard cider if you wanted to, but we want to turn it into vinegar. For every half gallon of vinegar you're trying to make, you want to add a quarter cup of sugar. I did try to one time add extra sugar because I assumed if I add more sugar, there would be more the alcohol and the Gizmo, excuse you. There'd be more alcohol and then there would be more vinegar, but I just got a moldy mess. Then the only other thing you have to do is fill your jar with water. When you're using water, you wanna make sure it's non-chlorinated because the chlorine could kill the bacteria and yeast. So it would be good to buy some distilled water if you don't have a well like I do because there's no chlorine in my water or if you have a purification system that filters out the chlorine. You guys want to see the little, oh, can you get it to focus? You guys see the snail I found? Gross. <laughs> My kids were here. They would think this is so cool. That's real food, though. Real food has dirt and bugs on it. And a snail. Look at that guy. Don't worry. We'll go release him back into the garden. <laughs> you don't want a snail in the garden. <laughs> Snails eat my produce, hence why it's eating my apple. All right, the only other thing you have to do is kind of mix that sugar in a little bit. It will naturally dissolve. Making vinegar is one of the easiest things to do. There's not much to it at all. And then the only other thing you kind of want to make sure you do when you're making vinegars or any ferments really 
So you want to make sure your, your vegetable scraps are underneath the water. I have one of these really cool ball fermenting tools. It's got some grates on the bottom and all you have to do is stick it in here. And it helps hold down underneath the water. If you don't have one of these contraptions, totally fine. Just keep your vinegar that you're making on the counter and stir it every day and get the pieces that are touching the top underneath the liquid and that way that will prevent mold. If you do get a little bit of mold, it's actually okay. You can just scrape that off. It's not that big of a deal. And you want to set this on your counter and it usually takes about six weeks or so to make it. And then all you do is strain the peels out and you have your apple cider vinegar. If you don't have one of these things, no big deal. Just put a cloth with a rubber band around it or put a or a coffee filter with a rubber band, something that's gonna keep it closed from bugs getting in it because fruit flies are going to be attracted to this. And you do wanna make sure that there is oxygen flowing. You don't wanna put an airlock on this. Oxygen can flow in, in and out of this. If you were to close this off, that's when you make alcohol. Alcohol is made in an anaerobic environment and vinegar is made in an aerobic environment, meaning vinegar needs oxygen and alcohol needs zero oxygen. And that's all you have to do to make vinegar. It's super easy. I don't want you to be intimidated by this. This is one thing that was super like empowering to me when I realized I can make my own vinegar. Who knew you could make vinegar at home and it's that simple. You don't need any special equipment. Now this vinegar is not gonna get to the point where you could can with this vinegar because it's not gonna be at 5% acidity. Distilled vinegar is actually distilled like you distill liquor. And so it is very concentrated vinegar and this is not like that. This vinegar is really good for cleaning, salad dressings, things like that but you do not want to can with this vinegar. But there's something really cool to be able to turn scraps into another product. Kind of a zero waste option. So I'm actually sending this to my sister. I happen to have enough vinegar, homemade vinegar and store-bought vinegar that I don't need this. And I will have her check just to make sure every couple days, just look at it and make sure that the scraps are underneath. And if there are any that are floating at the top, give it a little stir and make sure that ones that were on the top get submerged again. And that will help prevent the mold growth. So I'm giving this a good stir. Because the roaster gets really hot on the sides along here, you wanna make sure that you're not getting any burnage. That's a technical term that we use in the business along the outside. And just give it a good stir. And it smells like fall in here. And I love it. <laughs> yeah, a couple of them are sticking a little bit on the side, so this was a good timing. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of water in here because these apples aren't quite giving as much juice off as I want before we get all of them hot. So I think I'm gonna add a couple, a couple more cups of water in here. <laughs> my favorite way to eat applesauce is on buttered toast. I actually will dip my toast in applesauce. I like really cold applesauce. Growing up, my mom and I used to make applesauce. We didn't can growing up, but we would freeze it in little containers, maybe like this big of a container. And then I would put that frozen container into my lunchbox and that was my ice pack. And so I've always been used to eating really cold, almost like crystally icy applesauce. And that's my favorite. And so that's how I like to eat my toast on buttered. And so that's how I like to eat my applesauce on buttered toast. So we need to go ahead now and jar up some of this apple cider. There's quite a bit in there. I think we'll probably be able to get a couple jars full. And last time I spilled this all over the floor. I spilled two whole quarts worth of apple juice, or excuse me, it was pear juice on the floor. And that took me, I think I had to mop my floor like four or five times before the stickiness came up. So we're gonna try to do a better job on this and not spill it all over the floor. We're gonna taste it. Is it hot? It's probably hot. Mm. Oh, Ooh. the hint of bitterness, like a dryness at the end. It's very light. Mm -hmm. It it tastes really apple-y at first, and then the aftertaste is pretty light. Almost like mm -hmm. apple peels. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, But there's a bitterness. I wonder if that's because it's so much skin. Probably. Because that's what it tastes like to me, is apple mm -hmm. peels. I like it. It's well. really good. It should really be really good iced. And yeah. Add a shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's why we're making this. Because we're going to have... I'm envisioning dinner parties and we'll have yes. like hot, hot cider and we'll put like yes. orange pe um, oranges in it and cinnamon mm -hmm. sticks and things like mm -hmm. that and then people can spike it if they want to yeah. or after a long day skiing coming home to this mm -hmm. yeah that's really good okay
I need to turn this down. Yes, you do. It's not, it's too hot. I think it's causing it to evaporate. Maybe you should put the lid on too. Yeah, I think it's too much of the lid on already. Because there's the, the anatomy the of the stamens. Yeah, I know about And then there's the female part. And then when the, the pollen att attaches to the female part, it goes down the tube and then into the ovary of the flower. Oh. And the ovary of the flower is what, where the apple starts. Oh, wow. But the bee has to come and... Yes, from a different apple tree. Oh. It can't be the same apple tree. I didn't know that. Yeah, it has to be a different tree. My sister is giving me an anatomy lesson of an apple. I can give you some book recommendations if you need Becky. <laughs> so my sister homeschools my nephews, and one of them is going into kindergarten. They've just been learning about Johnny Appleseed, so she's been giving me a whole anatomy lesson and sex lesson. No, I shouldn't say that. She's been giving me a whole anatomy lesson and reproductive lesson on the science of an apple, which is really interesting. A lot of stuff I didn't know. Okay. You can link the book below if you want. I put a piece of parchment paper over this roaster with all these apples because I'm going to put some foil on to keep the moisture in. But I don't want the foil touching the apples, so that's why I did that. So we're starting to process the other variety of apples. The small pink ones were the ones we started because these were the ones that were a little bit more likely to go bad quicker. I still have maybe an eighth of the wheelbarrow left, but the apples are really small. Can you see the size difference? I have larger ones of this variety, and these are the largest ones of this variety. So we're gonna be able to move a lot faster processing these. And I think I'm gonna save a lot of these. I'm gonna actually crush them and try to make apple cider out of the whole apple instead of just the apple peels. We're going to move on to start processing apples so that we can make a quick apple crisp in the fall and winter. And another reason we want to use these ones when we do the apple crisp in the fall for the fall and winter are these are a much firmer apple, so they're going to hold up a lot better in cooking versus these teeny tiny ones. And then these are the ones we're starting on. And they certainly are going a lot faster. My sister already in a matter of, I don't know, how long was that? Uh, probably eight minutes, maybe ten. Almost she, filled my crock pot. Yeah. So those are going much, much faster. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to empty the peels and the skins from here and then I'm going to put a fresh set of peels and skins in here which probably will take most of this container but whatever doesn't fit I'm going to throw these and give them to the chickens because I don't have time. I have to work tomorrow so I don't have to, I have to can all this tonight to process a third round of these. So let's get this into the juicer. Oh yeah I'm going to do Friendsgiving. So from that first round, we got two quarts of apple cider. I definitely got a lot more cider when I did the Asian pears, but still pretty good for, you know, we're not doing anything except letting it sit here. So I think it's worth it. I was reading the manual the other night, you know, a little reading before bed. And there are so many cool things you can do with this thing. I'm really glad I finally have this. Crisps are one of the easiest desserts to throw together. All you have to do is make a crumble topping. I do have in one of my videos where I make a crumble topping. They are a Jones family staple. We grew up with my mom making apple crisps all the time. So delicious. Some good vanilla bean ice cream. And you can make crisps out of any fruit, really. Berries. Peaches. Well, I don't think we've ever had enough peaches, but I bet peaches I think is better with cobbler because they get so juicy and break down. But Marionberry Crisp, again, another Jones family staple. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm going to fill this a little bit full because I know when they thaw, they will break or, you know, they'll kind of shrink down just a little bit. So this is going to be a little bit. We're going to do a full 9 by 13 size. And then I have a freezer bag and we're just going to fill the freezer bag. Apples freeze really well. Sometimes I just chop them up and throw them in the freezer and I'll put them in my husband's baked oatmeal that I make all the time and they just freeze really, really well. I don't worry about flash freezing them like on a cookie sheet or anything. I just put them in a Ziploc bag and move on. Basically that really full 9x13 just filled a really stuffed full freezer bag so 
we don't need to measure the rest of them out. I'll just make sure that all of them look like this full. I want to be honest. I did add some sugar into this. These apples, ooh, these apples are pretty tart. In the past when I've made applesauce, we usually go to a apple festival every year because I do live in Washington state and we grow a lot of apples for the whole nation in Washington. And so there's a lot of apple festivals and they'll usually have like 30 or 40 different varieties of apples. So traditionally when I make applesauce, I just grab a bunch of different types of apples and I make my applesauce out of probably 10 or 15 varieties of apples and you get a really a good applesauce and I normally don't sweeten it. But this one, it did need a little bit of sugar. So for each one of these, I probably added about a cup and a half of sugar. Immersion blender is one of my favorite kitchen utensils or appliances. I'm gonna start filling some jars. We've got enough to do one canner load, including that apple cider. Applesauce for. So I just added some lemon juice to each one of my jars. Both pint and quart jars for 20 minutes. Okay. And then how much lemon juice? One tablespoon, right? For a quart. because I'm going to do it in the same batch. 10 minutes. My sister is doing the same thing where she's just taking a clean paper towel. You could use a clean cloth too and just wipe the rim of your jar and we're going to put a new canning lid on and a band on. You want to check your rims to make sure there's no nicks or cracks or anything when you're going around and feeling. You want to make sure there's no food on the outside of the jar so that it doesn't inhibit your seal at all. And I sure made a mess with these ones, didn't I? Yeah, just um, finger tight. This water is not hot. It's warm. It's probably warm bath water because some of these juices have cooled down. So I do not want to put cooled jars into hot water or I'll break my jar. So you want your water to be about an inch above your jars. It can be more than that, but this is gonna over boil, or this is gonna boil over, so I just am gonna take a little bit of this water out. I'm gonna have this come to a rolling boil, and then I'll set the timer for 20 minutes. We just filled up three more of these jars of apple juice. We were gonna call it after this, and we weren't gonna do any more juice, but because we just peeled the other variety of apples, and they have such a different flavor, we wanna try and do a taste comparison between the two different types of varieties of apples. So this to me smells more like traditional apple cider oh yeah, smell. Does. And so we wanna see if the bitterness truly is coming from the other apple um, and go from there. Yeah, so we'll get this filled. And we got another three more jars of juice. So you got six total jars. Six total jars of the other one. Oh, shut the door. Oh, I sure hope not. Okay, I'm excited about this. Okay. So we have our other apple cider that we're gonna try from the other variety. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Oh, way better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's still a little bit dry at the end, but it's sweeter yes, and sweeter. definitely what you think of when you think of apple cider, mm -hmm. warm apple cider. If you put cinnamon in this. Yeah, this is good. Whew, it's delicious. Mm. All right, oh, that's so good. So my sister is about to head out. I still have a lot of canning to do. We just set the timer for the first round of the applesauce and I took the juicer off the stove. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get another canner on in just a minute. But my sister is about to leave with an abundance of stuff. So I'm gonna show you what my sister is gonna leave with. When I did that big harvest video, a few of you guys asked if I share the abundance. And yes, I do. She does. <laughs> so if you come and work on my homestead, you're gonna leave with some goodies. So let me show you what she's going home with. 
Becky sharing milk from her favorite local creamery. It's raw milk. We have one quart. Is this a quart or a pint? It's a quart. One quart of the, whoo, that's so hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like boiling hot don't touch it we have one quart of the apple cider that we just did almost two dozen eggs no more than that's almost three dozen eggs. oh is this a two dozen package okay almost three dozen eggs her delicious ranch dressing seasoning mix the apple cider vinegar that we're gonna try for these are the apples that I prepped that I'm gonna try to do or I am going to make apple butter for my son um, a couple of Asian pears, they are like my favorite. These are the last Asian pears we have. We found them in the wheelbarrows of apples. We have four bags of 9 by 13 apple crisp mix. This one is lovingly marked because the bag has the hole. So I'm going to be going home and making apple crisp. And then to come will be a video on making calendula sap. So Becky gave me a quart of dried calendula. I am going to put half of it in here with um, olive oil that I have at home. And then after that's infused for a few weeks, four to six weeks, I am going to take some beeswax and make a trial batch of sap to see if we like the recipe. Once we nail the recipe, we are going to bring to you um, some sap videos with beeswax and olive oil, as well as um, olive oil and beef towel that Becky rendered. We might maybe add some essential oils into it as well. So I think it's gonna be a great stocking stuffer gift, so <laughs> stay tuned for that. So while my sister's packing up, let's just show you what we got going on. We have this one that's getting pretty close to me needing to zip up and blend up. We have this one. This roaster seems to be working a little bit slower, but we're getting close to needing to blend that up as well. We started this one probably about 30 minutes after, or an hour after we started the one in the white pan. So after all that work, we still have this many apples left and we barely, it doesn't feel like we put much of a dent in it, even though I know that this wheelbarrow was kind of overfloweth with apples. So we probably used half the amount of these pink apples. We did get through the box of pink apples, but this bin, we have so many apples left. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of apple things for the next while. This is why I do freezer meals. I have a thing of enchiladas here that are gonna go straight into the oven. After doing an entire day of food preservation, the last thing I want to do is cook dinner, and I really don't want to spend money on going out to eat. So I'm going to throw these in the oven. These have been defrosting all day. There's no cheese on the top of these ones, which means that I must have ran out of shredded cheese when I was making those. After they're in the oven for about 45 minutes, I'll probably put some cheese on the top and get them in the broiler. And I need to empty this canner load. So I let these sit probably after they boiled for 20 minutes, for probably 10 minutes here with the stove off, just letting the water cool down just a little bit before I brought them out, just so that I don't have that experience again. This is now boiling, so I'm gonna set the timer for this one for 20 minutes. This just has applesauce in it. Up the last roaster pan. I got that one filled and in the canner, and we are just chucking along. This is a very, very, very busy time of year. Harvest season is just crazy. That's just what makes fall all the more worth it. You get to see all the fruits of your labor, you get to see all your beautiful jars in your pantry, you have a lot of convenience food in your pantry, and winter is a time to relax. And I plan to relax this winter. Sometimes I'm like, I wish my garden season was longer and all these things, but you know what? When garden season is done, I'm done. <laughs> and I'm ready to be done. But then come late January, I'm ready for it to start all over again. So I do relax, but right now is not the time. <laughs> the last one oh. Oh. this is my
my third canning session in a row where I've had a big, or not a big, but jar break, forget to put the lid on it, a lid explode. <laughs> I'm tired. It's the end of the night, and now I have to clean. I'm not going to clean that out. <laughs> I'll do it later. If you can things, that will happen. It's not ideal, and it is frustrating. And so far, I've only had technically one jar break. That was the first jar. When I did my pizza sauce, I forgot to put a ring on my jar, so it got messy. And then when I took out, which I didn't film, I was just making hot sauce by myself. And when I took the jar out of the canner, the ring popped off. So the actual jar didn't break or the ring didn't break, but the, the ring popped off so the lid popped off and it kind of spilled everywhere. I'll put a picture so you can see what it looked like. Nobody was hurt in the incident. It just was a pain to clean up. And I had never had that happen before. And so I put on my Instagram asking what do you guys think happened? And a lot of you guys said that I probably didn't let it sit in the canner long enough so that the temperature between the outside air and the actual canner hot water was the same. Or the other theory was that maybe I overfilled the jar. I don't always measure, but I tend to underfill than overfill, but I don't know. We're done. I'm tired. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys enjoyed the new camera. Tell me if you can tell a difference between the sound quality and the picture quality. It's been fun getting to use this. It's been a learning curve <laughs> figuring it out. Because normally, like I said, I just use my old iPhone 7. And so it's been fun actually having what I think is going to be a little bit better for you guys. So just let me know what you think. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me and my sister today. This was not necessarily a tutorial today on what we were doing, just kind of hanging out and maybe learning a few tips along the way. If you guys are new to canning, I hope you give it a try. Like I said, I think the Ball Canning Cookbook is the best resource. That is the cookbook that I go to time and time again. It's the only one I have, the only one I need. I'll leave the link for that down in the description along with all the canning stuff. And if you want to actually see my recipes, I do have a blog, scratchpantry.com. You can go check that out where I have that homemade ranch seasoning that I actually gifted my sister and a bunch of other little fun things. It's kind of in the beginning stages, so there's not a ton of stuff on there, but I'm working on building that every week, just getting more recipes and kind of building that so that there's a lot of fun stuff over there, the recipes that I use all the time. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you're new around here and you wanna watch some more of my videos, some more will pop up right here. You can go head over and watch those. I do have actual canning tutorials where I do take you step by step by step, but this was a big project today and we were just having fun in the kitchen. So I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great night and I will see you guys next time. Thanks guys, bye. I figured I better show you what the dinner looks like. I actually don't have any cheddar cheese, which is what I normally would put on here. So I put just some mozzarella cheese and we're gonna call this dinner tonight. I have some homemade sour cream, might slice up a couple tomatoes, and that's dinner. And that's why I do freezer meals, so that on canning days like this, we can have a delicious, hot, home-cooked meal that took me two minutes. Well, probably five, four, just to grate the cheese. So, have a good night, guys.